Ice Cold in Alex. So hey guys, I'm finally back reviewing this blooming movie. I said I would ages ago when I did my real roulette video, put a random number from a random number generator and pick this movie at complete random. And this is what we got. The movie in question, of course, is the oddly titled Ice Cold and Alex, which I uh, was able to get on Blu-ray. And it was from 1958. It's directed by J. Lee Thompson and it stars John Mills, Anthony Quayle and Sylvia Sims. And J. Lee Thompson you may know as the director of such awful films as Conquest of the Planet of the Apes and Battle for the Planet of the Apes in 72 and 73. Um, but he's also known for directing the original Cape Fear with uh, Robert Mitchum as the bad guy, which was a very good film. So this film could have gone either way. I'm happy to report that we have actually stumbled upon a very good film here and Ice Cold in Alex is actually a very good war film, even though it's not a conventional war film as you may expect. You know, there's not going to be big explosion in this film. Well, there is one. But there's not people firing on each other. Well, there is one time. The point is, most of this movie is about the characters trying to get away from war, not moving into it. They're not trying to fight. So there's not a whole load of actual combat. There's barely any to speak of. So it's not a conventional war film. It's simply in a war setting. So the story focuses on about four people. John Mills is the main character. Sylvia Sims, Anthony Quell, and Harry Andrews all together in an ambulance trying to retreat from uh, Trebuk in Libya and trying to get to Alexandria as the Germans are pushing forward onto uh, Trebuk. And they're, you know, they're trying to get away. And they're doing this in this ambulance where they've nicknamed Katie. It's going through the deserts and for two hours, and it is a two hour long film, you're with these characters as they try and escape. And they pick up along the way Anthony Quayle's character, who is a South African officer, and there's a little bit more to him than we uh, originally see. And I found this film very interesting in a number of ways and it was a pleasant surprise to watch. But there are some problems with it, of course. I always try and keep an open mind going into older films, I understand. Uh, some of my favourite films are films from, you know, the 1920s. So I'm not afraid of a film that's a little bit slow. But there are some scenes in Ice Cold and Alex which feel a little bare bones in the way they're executed and they just feel a little bit slow. When I say bare bones, I mean soundtrack wise. There isn't much of a soundtrack to this film. There is very select moments. Very rarely though, 90% of this movie, it's just a silent backdrop. You're listening to characters talk, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I think we're just so used to hearing it nowadays, you know, a constant little score in the background. So, you know, you could argue that, but I just think it could have used it a little bit more at some points. And if not that, it needed something because some scenes drag on a little bit too much. For example, a scene involving quicksand goes on a little bit too long and, you know, they're, they're okay scenes and they don't fully work, but they do a good job regardless. It's just, you know, it feels a little bit shy from greatness. There are some really good and interesting things about the film though. For example, Anthony Quayle's character who is the South African officer. I won't spoil it, but it goes into a lot of uh, stuff to do with him because he is not the person these people think he is and he creates a very interesting dynamic and he is the reason for this film being as good as it is. There's also another very interesting side to this in that John Mills' character actually um, is battle fatigued. He is fed up of war and he has resorted to drinking and alcoholism to solve that. And the other characters in the film are trying to, you know, stop this from happening. They're like, you can't be drunk while you're driving this truck. You can't do that. But he's also battling it. And what ends up motivating him is that he wants an ice cold lager in Alexandria, hence the name Ice Cold and Alex. I know it's a pretty bad name, but you know, go with it. So he is literally motivated to survive this ordeal through the desert in order to get a beer. That's pretty unique. And I very much like the direction this film took in that regard, you know, looking at a character with alcoholism and showing how they deal with something like this and why they've turned to alcoholism in the first place. It doesn't even completely condemn it, which a lot of people I guess are gonna disagree with. But in many ways, it's a story in that regard about accepting yourself for your flaws, but also moving on and putting your flaws to good use, you know, being the best you can be. And I very much like that they create sympathy for this character instead of condemning him for his problems. For example, normally you'd make fun of someone with alcoholism, like in a film like uh, Seven Psychopaths, for example, Colin Farrell's character. It's all, haha, you're Irish and you drink, what what a surprise, blah. And it's like, yeah, okay. I mean, that that's funny. It's a different kind of movie. I don't blame it, but it's just a different way of doing things that I appreciated this movie for, you know, doing. And that creates an interesting dynamic because this group are traveling through the desert 
and they get wearier and wearier as they do so. They're running out of water, they're running out of petrol, which is a gas for you American folk. And it's interesting because as they get through this desert, they start to get more irritable, especially John Mills' character, who is obviously, you know, suffering from a degree of mental withdrawal from not drinking. So he's getting more and more irritable, and that's interesting as well. The problem is this movie doesn't go into an especially deep depth. The sense is strong with this one. He doesn't really interrogate that aspect of the film, and for a while I thought, that's kind of a flaw, and it made me lower in my, how much I was enjoying it for a while, because I thought that that was the main focus of the film, but it's really not. And that's why this film retains its very goodness. It stays very good because of other aspects. For example, this film isn't just about an alcoholic guy going through the desert and creating very tense scenes. It's also about accepting humanity. This film clearly condemns the act of war in general. It goes on the philosophy that in order to condemn like war and action, you can't actually show it. The idea being that if you show action and try to condemn it, you can't really condemn something that is inherently enjoyable to watch, if that makes sense. It's obviously an argument that is up for debate, but many will say that in a film like Paths of Glory, when you see action happening and Stanley Kubrick tries to obviously condemn this, you can't do it because watching the action is enjoyable, and so there's that disconnect between disapproving and finding it enjoyable, which I hope makes sense and is obviously clearly up for contention, but that's the kind of idea that this film goes for. There's very little actual action in the film. If you actually know you don't like old British war films, then this movie isn't going to turn you on to that, I don't think. Um, but if you don't know, it's worth giving it a shot. You know, keep your mind open. It's in black and white, but seriously, we're black and white movies. Have you ever watched one? You don't really notice it's black and white uh, for about, you know, you notice it for 10 minutes and then it's like, oh, it's a film. Mm. So don't let that hold you back. I seriously think it's worth giving it a shot. And the overall message that to accept humanity and to realize that there's a greater enemy like you know the desert is the greater enemy and you should all have to band together and it sounds so stereotypical but the film handles it really incredibly in the final minutes of the film i don't want to go into it because obviously i can't spoil it but it's very very well handled and has a fantastic message for a war film that goes beyond war is bad don't war please but what do i think of the film overall well i think it's a very good film with some flaws in it. I think it's not going to be for everyone, but I think everyone should at least try it if they don't normally watch these kind of films. Try it, you know, see. It's best to just open your mind to these sorts of things and let them in and appreciate that it's a little slower than modern films, you know. This isn't an action thrill ride. It's just, it goes at its own pace and you may have a problem with it legitimately, but as long as you open your mind to the idea that it's slow, then you're allowed to have any problems you want to have with it. So overall, I give Ice Cold and Alex an 8 out of 10. A brilliant surprise from me. I really enjoyed watching it, and we have actually found a good movie from this real roulette thing from right from the very get-go. So now it's just a matter of finding the next film. So let's do the random number generator 905. Oh, this is a weird one. The Villain from 1979, starring Kirk Douglas, and margaret and... Arnold Schwarzenegger. That could go one of two ways, but you know, my next Real Roulette review will be the villain, and stay tuned into my channel if you want to see more of these videos, and we're going to try and find some diamonds in the rough, sift through the crap and find some good stuff, hopefully. But that was my review of Ice Cold and Alex. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and favourite in the boxes below. You know what to click, and please subscribe. It helps me more than you know, and thank you so much for watching.